because I've been interested in talking to my next guest. Uh, with me right now is a man who has energized and revitalized the sport of boxing, as far as I'm concerned, not only with the impressive start to his career, but also due to the brutality of his knockouts against the sporting world's biggest names. He'll fight again this Saturday, August 5th. Please welcome the one and only Jake, the problem child, Paul. Jake, Paul, what's going on, big time? How are you, man? How's everything? I'm good, man. Excited for this fight. Ready for my redemption arc to start on Saturday. Now, you know why not. You know me. First of all, let me say this to you. I get on you all the time, but I got love for you. You know I like you, and I love what you do for the sport of boxing. I love the work that you put in, how much you care, and, and a lot of the issues that you talk about. As far as I'm concerned, you don't cheat the game because you go out there and you train hard. You do what you got to do to be the best that you could be. But I keep telling you, you ain't a scrub. You're pretty damn good. And if you're pretty damn good, once again, you're getting into the ring with a fighter, but not necessarily a boxer in Nate Diaz. Why are you doing this? Man, I've always wanted this fight with Nate Diaz, and there's been beef there. And the whole reason this all started was people were talking smack to me, and I had to settle the beef. Mm -hmm. So he said a lot of things about me, my family, uh, my career, and basically has said that he would beat my ass. And I'm not okay with that. So... Mm -hmm. That's I want to settle that beef man to man. Mm. Um, and he's a massive name. He's a massive name. He he brings a lot to the table. He's been boxing since he was, you know, 16 years old with world champion Andre Ward. Um, you know, so he's been boxing and he's tough and he comes forward and uh, he makes exciting fights. And so I think the fans are the ones who are going to win out of all of this. You know, Nate, Nate Diaz does have a tremendous reputation. He's as tough as they come. He doesn't back down from anybody. Um, there's no question about that. But as it pertains to you, what are you hoping to get from this fight other than a victory? Obviously, you want to win. You want to win in spectacular fashion. You want to put him to sleep. I get that part. But what else are you hoping to accomplish with this particular fight? I think just to gain experience under my belt. You know, it's only been three and a half years as a professional fighter. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to become a world champion. And the only way I do that is by fighting in these big moments, fighting longer fights. This fight's 10 rounds, which is more than I've done in my previous fights. Um, so to get those rounds of experience under my belt, I brought in a new team. Uh, to see, you know, to, to switch my technique, to implement a new game plan and to prove to myself that I can come back from a loss mm -hmm. and get even better and to show the world and to show kids out there, if you lose in, in basketball and your local thing, if you it, lose in life, if you get a bad grade, whatever it might be, that you can not just be down from that, but come back stronger. And that's what I want to prove on Saturday. Now, is it true that Sugar Shane Mosley, the former uh, welterweight champion of the world, junior middleweight champion of the world, is it true that he, that he was uh, helping you to train for this fight? Is that true? Yes. Yeah, okay. he's uh, been in this camp the whole entire time mm -hmm. and has been very, very helpful. What made you bring him on? We had originally worked together for my first professional fight, and he was, like, super busy after that. And... After losing, I just went to the drawing board and reevaluated everyone and everything on my team. And I wanted to bring back um, some of the people that I had originally worked with. And that's really where it all came about. But um, it's been an amazing camp, the best camp of my life. I'm feeling better than ever, best shape I've ever been in, best mindset. So I'm just excited to go out there and I'm feeling super confident. And I know what I'm capable of. Honestly speaking, I don't take I, I don't take you seriously when it comes to you saying you're in the best shape of your life because you always say that and you're always in shape. I've never seen you walk in the ring out of shape. You don't cheat people. I think that's the thing that people make mistakes of. They hear you talking and they underestimate you and then the weigh-in comes and then fight night comes and they're like, oh shit, what was I doing? What was I thinking? See, I, I think that's how you get them. I think you get them. You psych them out most of the time because you're always, isn't it true? Tell people what your workout is like and tell people how much you work on boxing and being in shape three hundred out of 365 days in a year. It's my life, you know, and this camp was nonstop. We're waking up you know, at the track running 800 meter, 400 meter, 200, 200, 800, 400, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200 mm -hmm. sparring, sprinting, all types of workouts, push-ups, pull-ups, sledgehammer, tire flips, jogging five miles after that, abs, getting punched in the stomach nonstop, and then doing it all over again the next day. Ice baths, recovery, yoga, meditation, visualization, manifestation of winning the fight. This is, this is my life. 
Um, and it's really all I do that and promote the fight. And that's the, those are the two things. And I think people get confused by me promoting the fight. They think I'm just like messing around by making these skits and having fun. Um, and they think I'm, you know, not going to come in and take this guy's head off. I'm going to, he's a wannabe gangster. He's been disrespectful. He's been unprofessional and I'm a very nice guy, but as soon as the bell rings, I'm, I'm ripping his head off on Saturday. Talk to me for a second, because you talked about boxing being your life. It's it's what you do. It's what you're committed to. Um, what was it like? Take us back to how you were feeling months ago when you got in the ring against Tommy Fury, who you wanted badly, and you ended up suffering your worst loss. Before I get into the details about that fight, I want you to first educate us and enlighten us about what was your emotions walking out of that ring that night, walking back to the locker room, after you had suffered the first loss of your career? Yeah, the taste of a defeat is terrible. It's it's uh, it's one of the hardest things to go through, but it can create something amazing. And that's exactly what it did for me. I never wanted to taste that again. And so it put me onto this path of being more committed, bringing around a better team, doubling down on, on this sport. I was going through a lot of things leading up to that fight and didn't prepare properly and it showed in in the ring and I said to myself I'm never going to let that happen again um and now I feel like this loss has set me on this path that I was supposed to be on before um but I, yeah it's a tough feeling man but I, again that's what I want to show kids mm -hmm. you can lose on the biggest stage possible and turn it into a W two L's nope. make a W I got you. I got you. That's a good point. You care to share with the audience and the kids out there what kind of things you were going through? Yeah, I was uh, I was going through things outside the gym, like uh, breakup, like mentally, like getting sick, um, you know, not being not being on point and trying to jam pack a camp in six, seven weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I basically started the camp seven weeks before the fight. And there's just not enough time for someone at my level to prepare. I get to Dubai, you know, there's dust in the air that I'm apparently allergic to. So I'm, mm. I'm sick for like another 10 days. Um, yeah. Just going, just everything that could have went wrong in this fight, like in that fight went wrong. Mm. Um, so it is what it is. And it's not, to, I'm not sitting here to make excuses. Like right. I lost, I, I was the one who chose to get into the ring and put everything out on the line. And no mm -hmm. one's going to remember the excuses I make or whatever. Mm -hmm. It just, I lost fair and square. It is what it is. Um, but I'm going to come back stronger. And, and eventually I want to go back after Tommy. Fury. I was getting ready. Yeah. That was where my next yeah. question was, because I yeah. would think it automatic. I mean, listen, we just watched uh, Terrence Crawford destroy Errol Spence Jr. And I take no pleasure in saying that because I got a lot of love and respect for Errol Spence Jr. But we saw him destroy Errol Spence Jr. And they're talking about an immediate rematch. I was thinking the same would have happened with you and Tommy Fury, as opposed to you going up against Nate Diaz. Was that because Tommy Fury didn't want it? Or is it because you want to go back to the drawing board, handle your business against Nate Diaz? Diaz, who you clearly dislike and you believe dislikes you, what was the motivation behind that decision? Yeah, the plan uh, leading up to Tommy Fury was always to fight Nate Diaz after because he's obviously a free agent from the UFC. I think his plan is to go back to the UFC, so the time to fight him is now. Um, and the Tommy Fury discussion is is still in the works, and I know I'm going to go back and, and get that W. You know, he... He barely beat me at my absolute worst. I put him on the canvas. Um, and so it's just a necessity for us to run that back. And I know that when I'm going into the ring, feeling at my best, I'm going to absolutely destroy him. Mm. So now that we are here and you're getting ready to fight Nate Diaz, as you're looking at your life right now, uh, where are you at, Jake, compared to where you have been in, 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 in the past, you were, you, you know, you knocked out Tyron Woodley. Don't get me started to what you did to my man, Nate Robinson. I think you should be, you should have been arrested for what you did to Nate Robinson. I mean, my God, you know what you did to, I still haven't been able to find him. Still APB out for him after that, after that, after that beating. But then again, he did instigate it. You didn't start it with him. He started it with you. So I can't fault you for that. But ultimately what it comes down to is that you are a person that walked around with a lot of confidence, not to say that you still don't have it now, but just where your mindset is as it pertains to this sport of boxing because folks want to see you in the ring fighting some boxers as opposed to people 
who just box but are not really boxers. Yeah, look, I'm in the I'm in the best mind space, best head space I've I've ever been in. And for me, it's about taking steps up in my level of opposition and challenging myself. That's why we wanted to make this a 10 round fight because Nate has some of the best cardio this sport has ever seen. Um, so I'm continuing to challenge myself, continue to grow in experience and continue to just get fights under my belt as I fight boxers in sparring in training, you know, fighting Tommy Fury and just taking steps up and up and up uh in, in the level of opposition and eventually going to you know fight people at the highest level mm. the top 10 the world champions that's what i want to go for and i'm sparring against these guys in practice i work with these guys in practice and now if, over the next two to three years it's just about uh developing my career and getting to the point where i can compete with them under the bright lights what do boxers say to you about you and what they see what do boxers say and and who are these boxers who talk to you and really let you know what they think about you. Yeah, um, I mean, like Ch Chad Dawson, world three-time world champion. Yep. Vlad, Vlad Shishkin, he's the, currently the number one challenger for the IBF title. These were the guys that I was working with the most in camp, and they're just like, he can punch, he can fight, he's got power in both hands, he's dangerous, he's slick, he gets into a rhythm, he's tricky, uh, he's got good defense, his body shots are incredible. Like these are words from from their own mouth, and they would tell you the the same thing and that's where this confidence has come from is in my preparation and you know working with these guys who are at the highest level and them giving me that direct confidence that's why I've talked so much and and laid it out on the line because I know what I'm actually capable of um, and I think before my talking was louder than my skill level and now my skill level is higher than my talking you don't think that's going to end up hate, uh, hurting you? Because I got news for you. You're an exceptional promoter. And the fact of the matter is you opening your mouth and you talking has, 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 packed, some, has packed some arenas. Uh, so do you think that's a good thing for you to sort of quiet down a little bit and let your skill elevate and let that do in the talking? Or do you think it might be important for you to keep talking while your skill level elevates? Well, I'm going to keep talking. That's just who I am. Right. But I'm saying my skill level is like matching it now. Okay. Um, or or is above. I'm always going to promote. I'm always going to, you know, sort of be a, be a little jackass and like poke and prod because <laughs> right. I, I like to do that. Um, but yeah, at this point, people are also watching the fights because of the skill level and because I'm making exciting fights and all of my opponents have touched the canvas. Every single person that I fought, I've put down onto the canvas. And, you know, that's what boxing fans want. They, they, they want that exciting power, the, those big knockdowns or big knockouts. And that's what I keep on giving them. What was it like for you? Just a couple more questions before I let you get on out of here, man. I really appreciate your time. Jake Paul right here with me on the Stephen A. Smith Show fighting Nate Diaz, uh, former UFC fighter, uh, this Saturday night, August 5th. Can't wait to see it. Jake, what was it like for you watching Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence? I know there's no way in hell you missed that fight. What was that? I like was you? shocked. I was shocked and highly impressed by Terrence Crawford and his strength, his poise, his his skill level, his defense. Um, it was a master class, and I think it shot him right up to the you know number one pound for pound. And it's all credit to Errol Spence, who has the heart of the line. I was rooting for Errol Spence. Uh, Errol Spence is a dope guy. I like him. I think he's super cool, and he has the heart of a lion. But it just Terrence was unstoppable that night. Teddy Atlas told me that he looked at Terrence Crawford and he has what Teddy called like a third eye, his instincts. He sees things before other people sees it and he's able to react quicker than people realize. And of course, he has the power that goes along with it. I think that cements him as the number one based on his performance against Errol Spence Jr. I think he's the number one fighter pound for pound on the planet right now. Do you agree with me? I would agree. I would agree. And it makes me think, like I, I start to think, who would have won Terrence Crawford or, or Floyd Mayweather? And mm. based off of how Terrence looked at welterweight, I think Terrence would have won. And then it, then it goes like, is he entering like a greatest of all time conversation as well? Um, just based off of that performance. And we'll, we'll see how things progress moving forward. There's a lot of more big fights for him out there. But it's, it's just fun to think about as a boxing fan, him versus Floyd. Jake, do you agree with me? Because I came on the air the other day after the fight, and I said that beating was so bad. 
and to watch Errol Spence Jr. slurring so much after the fight, I was concerned. I said, listen, I don't want to say that one guy, a guy but one law should retire, but it was the beatdown that I saw. It wasn't like he just got knocked out. He got caught with a punch like Woodley got caught by you. He got beat up for those nine rounds or at least the last eight Um, because I had him winning the first round. I said, if he's not going to retire at the very least, he shouldn't fight a rematch as early as December. He should take like a year off. Um, Teddy Atlas agreed with me about that, along with various others that that covered the fight. Where do you stand on that based off of what you saw from Errol Spence Jr. this Saturday night? Man, you know, I think every boxer values their health, and I think his team will make the right decision. Mm -hmm. And I will say, like, sometimes things look worse than they are Mm -hmm. in the ring, like, even when I was sparring in the early days, like I felt like I was getting my ass beat and like hit all over the place. Right. And um, then, then, I, you know, I didn't feel as bad afterwards or anything like that. So sometimes things look worse than they are. It all depends on how he feels, but yeah, obviously um, a fighter's health comes above all else. And yes. I, I would encourage him to take that very seriously. When are we going to see you? I mean, I, 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 assuming you win Saturday night, what's next for you? And if, you know, you being a boxer, what what, what do you view yourself as? Light heavyweight, cruiserweight, what, what, middleweight? What do you, what, super middleweight, what do you see yourself as? If you were fighting the elite fighters in the game today, who do you see yourself, who do you picture yourself going up against at what weight division? Yeah, look, it'd probably be um, light heavyweight or or cruiserweight. I'm sort of in the middle where, like, my natural best weight is around 190 pounds. So it's a little bit weird for me. Um, but, yeah, most likely going to be fighting, you know, cruiserweight, light heavyweights moving forward. Mm. Um, but definitely in that sort of, like, awkward middle area where I'm, like, the best at 190 pounds. Got you. I would, I would tell you. I disagree with you. I think you're going to go to 175. Do you know why I feel that way? That's where the money's at. It's never been. <laughs> it's never been in the cruiserweight division. Jake Paul is money, a capitalist. Is, you're a capitalist. I'm at. Say what? The money is where I'm at. <laughs> Say what? The money is where I'm at. <laughs> That's right. That's what I'm saying. You ain't, ain't nobody in the cruiserweight division. Historically, we paid attention to the light heavyweight to the heavyweight division. Cruiserweight division, we paid very, very, very little attention to. That ain't where the money's at. That, that To me, that's why I say to you, is it be a heavyweight or to be a light heavyweight? Last question before I get on out of here. You're fighting Nate Diaz Saturday night, uh, August 5th, at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. What will we see from Jake Paul that night that we haven't seen before? We've seen you knock out a few people. Obviously, we saw you lose by decision to Tommy Fury. Uh, what, what, what are we going to see in this fight? You're going to see sharp, sharp boxing, the sharpest I've ever looked, a skillful master class, poised, having fun, dancing, taunting him, and then I'm going to put him to sleep. It's going to be a vicious knockout. I I have, uh, I made a lot of sacrifice Mm -hmm. for this camp, a lot of sacrifice, and Nate Diaz is the one that has to pay for all that sacrifice on Saturday night, and I'm putting him to sleep. He's a punk. He's a bully, and he's going to get what's coming for him. So are you telling me you're going to toy with him first and then knock him out? You're not going to just take him out quickly? I'm going to have fun beating his ass, (laughs) and I'm going to embarrass him and make him look like a fool. Jake Paul, man, I appreciate you as always. We got a lot to talk about, but I'll let you finish this fight first against Nate Diaz. But you know you're always welcome on the show, man, and I always appreciate you, man. Thanks so much. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. All right, my man. The one and only Jake Paul right here with Stephen A. on the Stephen A. Smith Show. YouTube. Check it out.